Mr McMillan. Thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, officer uh, I am delivering the speech today on behalf of my colleague Graham Day, MSP, who is ill. I was privileged to be asked to deliver uh, this speech today for Graham and imagine that my role in the Scottish Parliament branch of the, and also the Executive Committee of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association might have been a factor in that. In 2013, I did visit the Falkland Islands on behalf of the Scottish Parliament to take part in a conference on the issue of self-determination for the Falkland Islands, something which Graham touches upon in his speech. So from this point onwards, thing also the speech is from Graham Day. Any commemoration demands careful reflection upon an event's impacts and legacies, and one marking a 40th anniversary requires a particular focus. Many, if not uh, most of us in this chamber, will have some recollection of the Falklands conflict. And I am grateful to those colleagues who supported the motion and are contributing uh, this evening. But a recent survey by Help for Heroes found that almost half of 18 to 34 year olds did not know when the Falklands War happened. Indeed, over a quarter of them had not even heard of it. Whilst based upon the age profile, that is perhaps not surprising, but it is important that we do not allow that conflict to join the Korean War and be felt by many of those who served in it as a forgotten war. Veterans and their sacrifice cannot be forgotten. It is crucial that we remember both those who lost their lives and those who were left mentally and physically scarred by events 40 years ago. When we reflect on past conflicts, it can be easy to get caught up in dates, overall narratives and accounts of decision-making of political leaders. But one of my abiding personal memories as a young journalist at the time was of an infamous tabloid newspaper front page reporting the sinking of the Volgrano. And that very much returned to the forefront of my mind when watching a recent documentary in the war, hearing a British naval veteran speak of his own mixed emotions on hearing of that event. Euphoria over a significant win for his side in the conflict, immediately tempered by recognition that many fellow mariners had perished. It is essential in reflecting upon what unfolded in the South Atlantic we focus on those individual stories and sacrifices on the front line. And the first front line in the Falklands consisted of 32 local Defence Force volunteers and the Navy personnel there at a point of invasion, none of whom had gone there expecting to see any action. At just 67 men, the Marine contingent known as the Naval Party 8901 showed a bravery and resistance that went unrecognised for too long. In a recent documentary, Major Mike Norman, who led uh, these men in a vastly under-resourced defence against an 800-strong landing party, described how certain of death he was. Many tabloid headlines at the time painted Norman and his men as cowards. Their efforts now acknowledged, however, quash any such claim. And during the several hours of fighting, around 6,500 rounds of ammunition were discharged. Casualties were inflicted and arms were eventually laid down only on the orders of the British Governor. After being sent home, most of the Marines immediately volunteered to head back and ended up there as part of the forces who, who actually recaptured the islands. 4-5 Commando, based out of Arbroath in my constituency, played a significant role in the Falklands, being among the very first troops to part, Cabinet Secretary Keith Brown among them. 4-5 were to become known as the Yompers, due to the extreme miles that they had to march yomping uh, in grim conditions on those small islands 8,000 miles from home. A uh, 110-mile uh, <coughs> route of constant diversions and detours, during the whole of which everything they had was carried on their backs. James Kelly, a young second lieutenant, talked of 44 days without fresh water, without a change of clothing, freezing cold, soaking wet, with wind chill temperatures well below zero. The Marines saw ships being hit and sunk and friends and colleagues injured, and it must have been unimaginably hard on all involved. But there were to be tough, heartbreaking experiences of those back home too. Theresa Davidson was just 25 when she lost her husband, Clark Mitchell of the Scots Guards, on the final day of the Falklands conflict. He was one of eight Scots Guards to lose their lives that day. All of this is a reminder, presenting officer, that there is nothing, nothing glorious about war. But apart from the liberation of the islands and the sending of a clear message that the right to self-determination is to be cherished and protected, the Falklands War proved important in another way, re-evaluating previous perceptions of trauma. 
It was to become recognised that even after the effects of a short-term war had the power to linger for much longer than desired. The unpredictable nature of trauma can be brought on by grief, survivor's guilt or simply the inability to cope with the reality of life after war. As a result, too many Falcons veterans have been led into paths of alcoholism, drug abuse, homelessness, family breakdown and also crime. And when you read the stories of Falcons veterans, the main takeaway is that for most, not a day goes by without a memory or thought of the conflict. Individual decisions made during the war can still play on their minds, with the only solution being to live with them and their consequences, good or bad. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, wasn't recognised until 1987. Before then, it was known as, during the, the Second World War as shell shock, and during the Great War, it was viewed as cowardice. There remains progress to be made. For many whose services there lies a fear that by disclosing a suspected mental health issue, they are disclosing a weakness that may affect their future careers. That is why I wish to express my continued appreciation for the military charities and associations who provided necessary support and friendship needed to manage the powerful emotions experienced daily by our veterans. For many Falklands servicemen, the effects of PTSD have taken years, sometimes decades, to manifest. Before PTSD received its recognition, veterans were shunned and unsupported to the point where the act of seeking help seemed out of the question. And take the example of the youngest Scot deployed in the Falklands, David Cruikshanks, aged 17, for whom joining the Navy was a dream come true. It was not until 1999, 17 years after the Falklands War, that his struggle with PTSD and depression was picked up by a doctor in an unrelated consultation. Only then did he start to speak out about his personal struggles. Presiding officer, last November I was fortunate to, to revisit RM Condor's Woodlands Garden of Remembrance, a poignant memorial to the men who will have lost their lives in various conflicts, including the Falklands. The garden's tranquil environment offers a focal point for the men of 4-5 Commando and their relatives to reflect and remember. You cannot visit it and fail to be moved. Though it is a matter of record that the 255 British servicemen lost their lives in the Falklands, as well as, lest we forget, 649 Argentinians. According to Royal British Legion figures, approximately 350 British Falklands veterans have taken their own lives since the conflict. Whilst it can be said that in the subsequent decades since the Falklands War, there has been more cultural awareness to the seriousness of PTSD, it is still an issue many struggle with. The expectation during the Falklands conflict was to get on with it and deal with it yourself, whatever it actually was. There can no longer be a stigma around asking for help, an act so simple yet in some cases life-changing. To conclude my contribution to this debate, I want to quote Ian Gardner, then commander of X-Ray Company, 4-5 Commando, as he reflected on the war, and I quote, We are all of us changed men. For many, it was a pivotal event in their lives. The time before was innocence while afterwards was a particular form of adulthood that not many ever see. In recognition of these words, this anniversary must serve as a reminder of the need of our collective responsibility to support those of our veterans whose service exacted a toll, because they bear their physical and mental wounds every single day, not just during anniversaries of the conflicts in which they saw action. Thank you.